say the promised land. They say, hold up. Watch out for that cat, Brother D. He wants to walk with fair clean. He may still be a heathen. You see, either way it goes, Lord, I don't know. You see, history and tradition at this time have been written and dictated by my foe. Regardless of the I feel it's all the same. So, Yahweh, may I ask you the reason for my pain? You see, I was born in this world, Pops, and I had no choice. The descendant of slaves, a soul with no voice. I mean, what did my people do to receive such a fate? No life without struggle. What lives did we take? You see, we must have taken millions of the slaves even more. Why else would our God leave us on these hellish shores? But my research team has not revealed such truths for my people since Cush have worshipped you as you. We've been a peaceful and obedient people, fair for us. So my question again, Almighty oh God, what did my people do? I mean, what did we do to be stripped of our names? What sin was so great that you made us all slaves? I mean, why did you thought that you deliver us to the belly of the beast? And hey, your pops said it's a mess because I can't find peace. You know, the slave ship was named Jesus, and then they said that was your only begotten son. Picture that. I mean, why does it seem that you stand idle while Satan has his fun? I mean, am I committing blasphemy because they say you're the reason that we're free? I mean, sure, we survived slavery and a whole lot more. But was it not written in the good book that you would not ignore? The children of Israel to whom you gave the covenant. And we're going to put a pause right there. All right, all right. You see, because some folks are lost and confused. That's right. You see, the lost sheep of the house of Israel and describes one group of people who were enslaved for 400 years in a foreign land. It does not describe anyone from 1,400 or 500 years ago. It does not describe anyone in the Middle East. It only describes a black man and a black woman in the United States of America, KKK, uh, period. And those, of course, who they dropped on the islands on the way. Now let's continue. Well, if that be the case, Pops, can you please explain this? I'm talking about the murder of our leaders, the bludgeon of our souls, the rape of our women, too many survivors turning to holes, the destruction of the black man and the destruction of the black family. See, I'm talking about the Tuskegee experiment, cocaine, and HIV. And on top of that, Pops, how about the miseducation of all those that might even slightly resemble me? Are we praying?
uh, Brother Siddiqui, uh, Hassan, uh, Regina Placid, Bob Cornell, Reggie Jackson, and there are others of you who have um, stood strong over the 33 years to build an institution that not only keeps our spirit rising, but also our mind sharp and our emotions filled with love. And so we really owe uh, the one people I mentioned and a lot of others a deep, uh, a deep gratitude for this institution and closet. You know, we, we have to thank those who really built institutions that keep us going. Only other thing I'd like to, to share is um, a thought that Brother Donnell just shared. And I think we need to, uh, to just to keep it in mind and let these gatherings really uh, revive our belief in the fact that we have survived slavery and a whole lot more. We have survived slavery and a whole lot lot more. We need to use these occasions to think back to what our ancestors went through. Can you imagine what your great grandmother and grandfather went through? What um, you know, your grandmother and grandfather went through? What your father and mother? Think about what they went through. We have it. We have it difficult. You know, there are a lot of things that are, are pushing us. But yet we rise. Yet we rise. We have come through all that. And so while we need to um, appreciate and celebrate what those who have gone before us have done, we also need to understand our responsibility to lay more bricks onto that path to freedom so that, our, so that in, in the future, our uh, young people, our descendants, will look around themselves, will look at the situation they're in and say, oh, we have to thank our ancestors for look what they did for us. Thank you.
name is Jahari Bikatore, and I am very grateful to be seen in this world. Welcome to the world on behalf of Page Academy. Um, and I just wanted to say a little bit about Page. This is my fifth year at Page Academy. I'll be graduating in June. And one thing I love about Page is that when that we, my, the class that I'm in, we are very young, but we can go so far. Because we just came back from a three-day overnight trip for the second time to Vermont. The first time they said, I don't think that we should let you go because your class is so young. But after the first three days we went, they wanted us to come back a second time for this one. Um, and that just shows that you can do whatever you said you want to. Thank you. My name is Mika Nanishi Tore, and I've been at Page Academy for the past five years. Um, it's an, it is an honor to and privilege to receive this award for my school. I recently started reading a book called Betty Before X, and I've been reading about how um, what Betty life was, oh, how her life was before she met Malcolm X. I, Paige Academy has been teaching me and my brother a lot about black history in the United States, astronomy and math, and it's really been a great help in my life.
for giving an award this morning. I would like to thank Malcolm X, who is the mentor of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I would like to thank Elijah Muhammad, uh, who is Malcolm X's teacher, who taught him all oh, praises are due to Allah. I would like to thank, thank Minister Farrakhan for guiding me in the way of righteousness. I also would like to thank Brother Sadiqi and all of the people from the Black Community Information Center. I would like to thank all of you, my community, our community, Chuck Turner, Jean McGuire, Mr. Moore, Lewis, Lewis Brown, who taught me in the children at age 22 years old from Tufts University, took us in vans and brought us all around to the community and showed us our black self. I would like to thank people like him. I would like to thank the seniors. Thank you, Chuck. I would like to thank the seniors for guiding me and giving me a map of what I need to do in this community. I am a product of the community, from the YMCA, the Shellhorn, the Black Philanthropists, the Recreation Center, including the Firehouse on Warren Street. I learned well, and I pray to a lot that I can keep this going. Thank you to my ancestors. Thank you to all of you. I do have a song. When I was a young girl at the YMCA, at the ABCD jobs, at the YMCA in Boston, I was a camp counselor on my first job. I was taught by some sisters from the Black Panthers, the Mau Maus. I didn't know who they were until I got older. These were sisters teaching children in the community how to go about and how to respect themselves. My mother, my father taught me how to respect myself, and then I had my community who did it after that. We were a close-knit family, a close-knit community. We went out into the streets together, and that's what I learned from my ancestors. So, that being said, I am not a singer. I do not know how to sing, but I have to express this for my love for Malcolm X at age 14. So, one of the Black Panther sisters, Miss Bailey, she told me to write a song for the children at the camp at the YMCA. Thank you, Jackie Cooper, as well. He was the director of the YMCA at that time. I wrote a song to the beat and the tone of Papa Was a Rolling Stone. It was that beat, you know, dun, dun, dun. So it was that beat that I went home that night and I wrote a song about Malcolm X. And here it is. So, it was 1965. That day we always remember.
cruise companies, you know, as a gold supporter, uh, one United Bank, uh, United Housing Properties, uh, Anubian Ocean, which has been with us from the very beginning. I have over that one. But uh, Greater Boston Association of Black Social Workers.
Rodney Muhammad, the nation of its Islam. Minister Rodney Muhammad holds a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University and a master's degree in education from Wheelock College. He works at the African American Institute, where he provides support for our college students so that they may successfully pursue their dreams and ambitions. Minister Rodney has committed his life to changing the terrible plight that has stagnated the growth and development of black people all over America by working and partnering with community groups such as the Black Minister Alliance, Concerned Black Men of Massachusetts, and the NAACP just mentioned a few. To help implement effective strategies aimed to solving such issues, Minister Rodney has worked under the leadership of the Honorable, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as a member and leader within the Nation of Islam for over 35 years. And Minister Rodney has been the host of the Nation of Islam, Islam's weekly radio podcast and the bio CNN <coughs> television show. Respect for Life Series. For the last 35 years, for the last 35 years, and Minister Rodney Muhammad has for over 35 years worked with men who are incarcerated by providing prison ministry in just about every major in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And in addition, Minister Rodney has worked with, the, with young people from across the city of Boston, from those with gang affiliations to students at Northeastern University. As a member to aid in molding them into responsible, educated, and successful future leaders. As a result of his tireless dedication to the citizens of Boston and his work to inspire a sense of self-worth and positive identity within the community. The Boston City Council has proclaimed November 2nd as Minister Rodney Muhammad Day in the city of Boston.
this morning, I'm very humbled by you. I thank you. Words do not express. To our community that has suffered much and is still suffering much because all hands are not on the deck. Because we have not yet seen the seriousness of our plight. We have not yet circled away. Our young people need to know it's a new day in the old time. And it's going to take all of us, all of us, all of us to make life better for our people. I know we're tired of seeing the drive-by shootings and the killings that take place in our community. Who's going to stand up? Who's going to rise up and say enough is enough? The Jewish community would never allow what happened in Germany to happen again. The black community must say we would never allow slavery to come our way again. We'd rather be dead than live through slavery for another 464 years. I'm honored to speak at the Malcolm X breakfast and talk about the liberation of our people. Malcolm was a voice. No one can take that away from him. A strong voice under the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He took Malcolm out of prison, polished him up at a time when most churches would never even step in the penal system. When you committed a crime, they write you out. But the nation of Islam, we never remind you of what you did once you come in. We polished him up, made him a great freedom fighter. during the 1600s. 
64 hidden years. From 1555 to 1619, that's 64 years. This is why great people in leadership call on the phrase, what is a 64,000 dollar question? Many of you know that our history did not begin in slavery. In fact, we came from kings and queens who built the pyramids in the Sphinx. We came from those who are the builders of great civilization. So here today in our veins is the blood of the great builders, the great genius of the past. Divided us by age, color, gender, and taught us to hate. 